What is up guys, Alex from Anna Creates here, and today I want to talk you through cleaning up your plugin lists so you don't have to search through a million plugins in the midst of your creativity. I think we've all been faced with those expired plugins and also those installers that just install every plugin made by a company, even though we only own like five of them. So today I'm gonna show you how to clean up the plugin list in Pro Tools, Logic, and the UA console app so you don't have to scroll endlessly through plugins that you don't want. Let's get into it. With more and more companies offering free plugins or plugin trials or just bundles into subscription where you have a million plugins that you don't need all of them or the installers that just install every plugin when you don't really want them all or don't want to see them all if you know which ones you already want to use. Our plugin lists are getting extraordinarily long as we scroll through them trying to find what we want. A lot of DAWs are addressing this and have a typing to find the plugin that you want, but sometimes we still have to scroll to find the plugin that we want, remember what it's called, or just see our options that we have. And that sometimes can get derailed by clicking on a plugin that you forgot you don't own or that you've never used before that you don't care about. It can just become a lot and overall it just sidetracks your creativity. Now companies like Waves allow you to install only the plugins that you want, whereas companies like Universal Audio have one big installer that installs all the plugins that they have no matter whether you own them or not. I find this gets even more annoying in the UA console app where there's only a small percentage of the ones that I own that I actually want to use in the console app while tracking. Now don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan of UA plugins, I absolutely love them. However, most of us don't own all the plugins that they have. So today I wanted to walk through how to show and hide plugins from your plugin list in Pro Tools, Logic, and the UA console. Now I will say that if you use all three of these softwares, you're gonna have to do them all individually because they don't really cross over between them. Now if you don't use all three of these softwares, just feel free to skip ahead in the chapter markers to find the software that applies to you. All right, so first let's dive into Logic. I'm running Logic Pro X version 10.5.1 on Mac OS X Catalina, but this will apply to any version of Logic Pro X. So the first thing we have to do is go up to Logic Pro X, click on that and find the preferences and then plugin manager. Logic has a really great built-in feature for exactly what we're doing here today. So what you're gonna see when this opens up is you're gonna have all of your plugins. You can sort it in any way that you see fit, whether that be the name of the plugins or the manufacturer, whatever makes it easy for you to find the ones that you need to take out of your list that you don't wanna see anymore. And once we find one that we don't want on here, for me, this is Era D Clipper. All you have to do is go over to the right-hand side to the use column and uncheck the ones that you don't wanna see in your plugin list anymore. Now when you click done and exit out of that plugin manager, when you open up a session in Logic, you will no longer see those plugins in your plugin lists. Next, let's look at Pro Tools. Now Pro Tools doesn't have a built-in feature like Logic does, but there is a way to get around it. You just have to go through Finder, a little back-end way. So the first thing that we're gonna have to do is actually quit Pro Tools. We don't want Pro Tools open when we do this. When we're done, Pro Tools is going to have to rescan all of our plugins when it opens up anyway to see what we've changed. Once once Pro Tools is shut down, we're actually going to open up a Finder window and we want to go to our Macintosh HD. So it should be on your desktop if you have that set up. Otherwise, you should be able to find it over here in the Locations tab. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go down this path of folders. First, we're going to click on the Library right there and then Application Support. And then we're going to find Avid right here. Click on Avid, then go to Audio, and then we'll see Plugins and you'll probably have a Plugins Unused folder here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the plugins folder. It's a little less elegant than doing it in Logic, but here we have a list of all the plugins that we have in Pro Tools. We're going to find the plugins that we don't want to have on our lists anymore, select the ones that I want, and then all I'm gonna do is simply move them over to the plugins unused folder. Now, once I've moved all the plugins that I don't want anymore into the plugins unused folder, I can now go ahead and boot up Pro Tools, and those plugins will just no longer be in the plugin list. And last but not least, let's look at the UA console application, you'll see that here if I click on an insert to add onto one of my channels, I already have less plugins in here because I've already done this to hide all the plugins that I don't want to see within the console application. To do this, it's very simple. All we have to do is go down to the bottom left-hand corner and click on settings. And then up in these tabs, we're gonna go to the plugins tab. And then here we have a list of all the plugins. All we have to do is go ahead and hit the hide button right here so it turns yellow. And then it will no longer show up in any of those plugin menus 
use in the console application. It's really easy to see the plugins that you actually own because the buy button won't be there. Now, remember that this does not hide the plugins that you will see in your application, such as Logic or Pro Tools. This is exclusively to the console application. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of it. Remember to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Comment down below if you have any more questions or things you'd like to see me talk about. I'm always open to suggestions. Subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you in the next video. Until then, always be creating.